What is happening folks, it's Hawkins back again with another Starfield video. Starfield is really becoming a game I am getting super excited to get my hands on and the Starfield Direct was such a treasure trove of information, I keep finding new details every time I rewatch it. So for today's video I thought we'd have a look at some of those details and let me know if you spotted all of them as well or whether I've missed something that you guys have spotted. If you do notice something I haven't covered then please do leave a comment in the comments below. But otherwise, let's have a look at some interesting details that you may have missed in the Starfield Direct. To start off, the big question about Earth's situation looks like it has pretty much been answered. We got a brilliant shot of this large structure here on this desolate looking planet and it was pointed out to me that it is actually the Gateway Arch that's found in St. Louis, Missouri in America. This is further confirmed when we get to see the solar system on the star map and it shows our third rock from the sun looking barren and grey compared to the blue marble which we would expect to see. There's even a Terran Preservation Society introduced into the game so it pretty much indicates that Earth is just no longer able to sustain humanity. It looks like we used it all up and then we fled into space. And we weren't even the first ones to leave. Here we meet a generational ship, and what did these guys do aside from leave Earth and forget about the rest of us? Well, for eagle-eyed Skyrim players out there, the familiar screaming plant Nernroot is safe and well. Once you've created your character and designed your look, you're not stuck with that look for the whole game. You'll be able to change up your character when you want with a stop at a genetics facility. Do you prefer to have your character showing face when possible? Then you can hide your spacesuit while in settlements and your helmet in situations that apply without having to manually take them off using these options. Did you catch this nice background that showed up here? We can have our own businesses. Dreams can be achieved in the settled systems and we can make boatloads of money. Talking of money, have you seen the cost of some of these ships? It's making piracy look like a very lucrative business. The ship shown being plundered in the direct was worth nearly three times our starting ship's value and the prices keep going up. However, with this register button and the ship scanning for contraband, it may not be as simple as just stealing and selling a ship. You may have to use a fence of some kind or find a way to register a ship as your own before you can make money off your ill-gotten gains. And we also saw here that you can have a whole fleet of different ships, saving them in starports until you want to change to a different vessel. Showing off the lightning here, it looks like dynamic weather is returning and I am delighted. Hopefully we'll end up with some life-threatening storms on distant planets and have a desperate rush to find shelter. In Starfield, weapons can crit and it's not tied to headshots. Here, Vasco calls out his captain by name. Welcome back, Captain Howard and it sounds a lot like it's text-to-talk speech. This could mean, like Codsworth in Fallout 4, calling a limited amount of names, Vasco could call us by whatever we like. Who is Ko? Is he a big deal in Freestar Space? We get a glimpse in Achilles City of this sign here, it says Ko Plaza, and later Ko nonchalantly standing next to the statue we saw there. We know companions all have unique quest lines. Is Ko essentially Freestar Royalty? Fallout had radiation that affected your health bar and Starfield has a similar mechanic. We can see something has caused this yellow bar to move in from the right, reducing our health pool. Will this be one of the dangers we face while exploring radioactive worlds? And it's not just radiation you need to watch out for. You can still get ill in space. We got a couple of very minor glances at this. For the sneaky-minded players, be aware that when scoping out bases that there's alarms and what happens when they get triggered though, Roof turrets, anyone? Can actually hold your breath in order to make a good sniper shot, as seen here. Some enemies will have additional bars underneath their white health bar, and this is probably armor. Each depleted white bar removes an armor bar, and is probably why armor piercing rounds are in the game. Legendary and named gear are in. We see this legendary helmet here that has traits to improve certain skills, and named weapons with interesting perks. Aside from planetary loading screens, going inside will also have loading times. I think we've already seen the intro sequence to the game, a small intro that shows us mining and finding that first artifact before it renders us unconscious. We wake up to the character creation and we must be special because our colleague is just holding the artifact and nothing has happened to her. Well we got a dirt nap. Ammo doesn't weigh anything in the game which explains some of the ammo levels that we saw. 
There's been a lot of debate on whether we can interact with water, and while I think it makes sense that we can't land underwater, I think we will be able to go into water. There's a few scenes where there's plenty of water showing, including us camped on the beach, so a swimming mechanic of some kind seems likely to me. Also, aside from the quality of the water, there may be some dangers to going in if this guy displayed here is anything to go by. Some creatures out there have traits and abilities that can be found using the scanner, like this mothwing that can be found in five different biomes, or this swarming dragon that lives up to its name and causes burning damage when it attacks. When jumping around the settled systems, you can plot a path through uncharted systems to get to your destination, but it looks like you have to explore the systems before it allows you to jump through. You even get a warning when your route goes through unexplored space. The outpost assignment screen shows that we can have security bots to look after our outposts. Also looks like we can have pirate bases based on Barrett being at the Crimson Fleet outpost. What are you doing there, you naughty boy? When selecting a landing spot, you'll get to see what kind of area you are landing in, in this case the coniferous forest, and how much of that area is already explored. Does this look any different to this? I didn't notice it either until it was pointed out to me. This new node on the menu looks to be unlocked later in the game, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is where we'll find our space magic menu. I'm guessing the artifacts we find will give us new powers, and are essentially the word walls from Skyrim. Bounties are confirmed and we can rack them up with different factions, and I'm guessing depending on our bounty, things might get difficult approaching certain systems. Planets have traits that can be unlocked by surveying that planet, and so far the one I can see us all looking for is the Gravitational Anomaly, as this probably means the planet is harbouring one of the artefact sites that we need to find in order to help Constellation, or even for those of us that want more space juju. For those of you who remember and played Oblivion, this guy makes an appearance again after nearly two decades. For those of you who don't know, the adoring fan originally made his appearance after he became the grand champion of the arena, and followed you around commenting on everything. And even after dying, would respawn after a few days, and yes, the original voice actor Craig Sessler has returned for the role. To another adventure! I expect some nods to other sci-fi in Starfield, but is it just me or does mum look like she worked for Cerberus? And finally! Fallout usually has some kind of mini-games included, such as the holotapes in Fallout 4 and being able to play cards in New Vegas. Here, a copy of Starlocked sits on a table and what looks suspiciously like a computer back there, just asking to be used for some mini-game fun. Will Starfield have collectible mini-games we can play? I certainly hope so. And there we go, 31 things that may have been missed in the Direct. Honestly, at this point, I'm sure even more have been found, and I'm looking forward to finding out what else has been dug up, having been hiding away for the last few days to work on this video, which has to be the most technical one I've ever put together. So did you spot everything in today's video? If not, feel free to leave the video a like, and if not already, consider subbing to the channel. Did I miss something obvious? Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Starfield is shaping up to be a game I'm going to enjoy sinking my teeth into, and I hope we get a few more things like constellation questions so we can keep knowing that the game is coming along nicely. But for today, that's all it is from me, so until the next video, take care.